Hello everybody, Russ Barkley back again with another short video on ADHD, this time covering the topic of can ADHD develop in adulthood with no childhood record of onset? Well, let's see. I think the overall answer is in a minority of cases, a very small minority, the answer is yes. And that's because not all ADHD is genetic. Some forms of ADHD, at least a third perhaps or more, are acquired cases in which at some point during development, usually during fetal development, during pregnancy, there is some insult that occurs to the brain that alters the further development of the prefrontal cortex and specifically the executive function networks. That creates a phenotype, if you will, a clinical presentation of ADHD, but it's not genetic in origin. So that can happen. Usually these acquired cases, these injuries to the brain, occur sometime during the childhood or adolescent years. We've talked about pregnancy complications, perhaps lead poisoning, exposure to environmental pollutants. I've talked earlier about head trauma and that that also can lead to ADHD. Remember, ADHD doesn't have a specific etiology that's required for diagnosis. So it's not like all ADHD has to be genetic or it's not true, it's not valid. That's not true at all. So yes, by adulthood, there could be a onset of ADHD that is secondary to some neurological compromising event, stroke, tumor, gunshot, head trauma, uh, other diseases, anything that affects that could give the presentation of ADHD if it affects those executive networks. Now, some people would prefer to rule that out. I don't. I prefer to call it acquired ADHD to distinguish it from the developmental ADHD. But that's not really what I want to talk about here today because I think what people are asking me about is this controversy that developed about seven years ago when papers began to appear showing that there was a childhood onset group and there was an adult onset group of ADHD and that they were similar in their clinical presentations but distinct from each other in some ways and that there was this adult onset group that was found that did not have an onset in childhood. And the paper that really kicked that off is this paper by Terry Moffat and colleagues that appeared back in 2015 uh, in the journal, uh, the archives, excuse me, the American Journal of Psychiatry. Apologies for that. So in any case, this is a longitudinal study out of the uh, follow-up study that had been going on in Dunedin, New Zealand since the 1970s. And these people were being assessed repeatedly. And by adulthood, they were able to separate these into two groups, childhood ADHD, adult ADHD. And what they reported was that the uh, prevalence of the two groups is as you would expect. 6% of them had childhood onset. And when we looked at adult ADHD, 3% had adult ADHD regardless of onset. But they found that 90% of those reporting adult onset ADHD lacked a childhood history of ADHD. And that set off a firestorm because as you know, we think of ADHD as neurodevelopmental, developing sometime during the childhood or adolescent years. And this was an instance where that didn't seem to be the case. Well, there's lots of problems involved with a study like this and making these kinds of claims. So first of all, I wanna emphasize that um, many of us admit that the DSM requirement that onset by age 12 be part of the criteria, that that should be eliminated. Uh, there is no precise age of onset for m any mental disorder and requiring that it be by age 12 or the case is not a legitimate case of ADHD is simply silly. And it's silly for many reasons. Uh, first of all, let me close that screen and bring this one up and show you. This is a meta-analysis of the age of onset for various mental disorders. Uh, it was published in 2021 over in the journal Molecular Psychiatry. And look at what they find here. 
Across the world, the average age of onset for ADHD, look at that lower graph, ADHD age 12. That's the average, which suggests that about, that's about half of the people with ADHD developed it before 12 and half did not. This study alone shows that the DSM requirement that you have ADHD by age 12 is a non-starter. It's useless. It's inaccurate. Half of the people with legitimate disorder have their onset after age 12. So this is why I always tell clinicians that while an early onset is characteristic of the vast majority of people with ADHD, that onset could be up to age 18, 20, 24, and still be a legitimate developmental onset. Uh, and as this, this graph shows you why that would be the case. So the age of onset requirement should be thrown out. The other reason it should be thrown out is that it's grossly unreliable. My longitudinal studies show that people simply can't recall accurately the onset of their disorder. And that in childhood, parents report that it was X, let's say age six. And then by adulthood, when we follow those same people up and we ask them and we ask their parents, when did your disorder development, it is so far off the original report that it's not funny. We found that they were off by as much as two to four years from the actual onset of their disorder. So, and that's both the parents and the people with ADHD. So what that means is that whatever anybody tells you, it's probably not accurate that indeed the disorder could have developed as much as two, three, four, ten years earlier, and the individual simply is not able to accurately recall it. So that's another reason we should throw out the requirement for onset before age 12. But it still doesn't get to this question of, is there really an adult onset of ADHD as Moffitt reported? Well, I suppose that's possible, but let's consider a couple of other possibilities. Moffat did not interpret this study from the standpoint that age of onset is unreliable. You just can't do a study of age of onset because what you're gonna hear from the person or others who know them well is not accurate. So you can't do a scientific study where the independent variable, age of onset, is unreliable. It's not possible, you're gonna get results all over the map. So that was a major problem with this particular study. Uh, the other thing is that they didn't attempt to rule out other explanations for the onset of those symptoms. So let me show you, a year later, Maggie Sibley and others using a multinational data set looked at this issue again late onset ADHD reconsidered from their comprehensive assessment. This was published also in the American Journal of Psychiatry. And here's what they found. 95% of the individuals they screened positive for ADHD did not have late onset. They had earlier onsets. Late onset here would be any onset, let's say, after about 12, maybe even up to 18 years of age. They did find that the most common reason why people were excluded was heavy substance use. In other words, people with adult onset ADHD did have adult ADHD, but it was secondary to heavy drug use. We would rule those individuals out, believing that their symptoms are better accounted for by their substance abuse not some earlier neurodevelopmental finding, uh, either onset earlier or onset in adulthood. So this paper goes on to say, there was no evidence for an adult onset of ADHD independent of a complex psychiatric history and particularly the use of drugs in adulthood. They also found that there was unreliability to reporting these onsets as well. So at this point, they're concluding that individuals seeking treatment for late onset ADHD may be valid cases, but generally what they found is that the symptoms either occurred earlier and could not be reported very well by one person versus others who knew them well, or that the symptoms developed later but were secondary to 
drug use, or some other psychiatric disorder. Now, let's finish up here with a review of all of this literature, and there were other studies on this topic, not just those two, but review all this literature by Leah Taylor uh, and my friend Kevin Anschel at Syracuse University. This published in Child Psychiatry and Human Development. This was published just about, um, I believe it was 2021, two years ago. And what they found in reviewing all of this research is that there was very little evidence supporting an adult onset for ADHD that was independent of some other acquired injury or drug use. Instead, they found that there were several reasons for thinking that these people had late onset ADHD when in fact they didn't. One of them was unreliability of reporting childhood symptoms. They also point out the fact that some of these adults with ADHD did have symptoms earlier, but they weren't impaired by the symptoms, so no one really paid much attention to them. And the reason they weren't impairing is that they were situational factors that kept them from being impaired by their disorder. Maybe they were in small classes. Maybe they were in private schools with a lot of extra assistance provided. Maybe there were others in the family that were working with them and helping them move along. But in any case, they escaped impairment despite having their symptoms. Another possibility is that the individuals with ADHD had symptoms that were mimicking ADHD but could be attributed to another disorder, as we've already talked about, drug use being one of those disorders. Remember, not all inattention is ADHD. Virtually all psychiatric disorders and learning disorders interfere with certain aspects of attention. Not always the same one as ADHD, that more forward, future-directed kind of attention that I talk about, but that can interfere with attention nonetheless. So at this point, all we can say is that, number one, the age of onset of age 12 in the DSM should be thrown out, should be ignored by clinicians. It's not legitimate. Number two, people's reports of the onset of their ADHD are not reliable. Saying that you have an onset in adulthood doesn't mean that that's when it actually occurred for various reasons. Number three, Sometimes adult onset ADHD does occur, but it's usually secondary to another problem, another disorder or drug use. So there is that possibility as well. Finally, as I mentioned at the start, adult onset ADHD can occur secondary to obvious injuries that affect the brain. But absent that, the vast majority of cases of ADHD have a onset at some time during development, if we think of development as occurring up to about age 24 or so. Some people would even extend that to age 30 because that's about when the prefrontal lobes finally finish their maturation. So with that broad of a spectrum, almost all cases of ADHD, except for acquired cases later in life, have a developmental onset, even if it isn't before age 12. Lastly, I do just want to mention that in another video I posted a couple of weeks ago, there was a study out of Israel of people who had never had ADHD before age 55 who developed it after that. And those individuals had a higher rate going forward over the next 15 years of going on to develop either mild cognitive impairment, which is a earlier form of dementia, or going on to develop frank dementia. Even then, the majority of people who had that adult onset, that is late adult onset ADHD, did not go on to develop dementia or cognitive impairment, but they were at higher risk of doing so. Have a look at that video if you want to learn more about that study. So hopefully this gives the rest to the idea that there is this unique form of ADHD that occurs in adulthood that isn't acquired and that doesn't have a childhood onset and is quite different from child onset ADHD. I don't think so. I think as Anschel and Taylor talk about here in this article,
it's likely due to other factors that were not evaluated in the study. Okay, well, that's my topic for this week. I uh, hope you enjoyed this lecture, and uh, stay tuned for other lectures as well. As you know, look at my background here. My books are gone and everything because I'm in the midst of moving over to another house. So hopefully the next time I see you, we will uh, be report recording from a new studio. Be well, everybody. Think about subscribing. If you're not a subscriber, please recommend the channel if you like the content here. Take care.